before as you've seen and uh, windy only or i should call it today the wind is um right to left as you can see and um, i'm fishing for gareth today a good mate who's fishing the spring league it's the second round of the spring league and he asked me to fish so here i am i'm in the what you call what, what you would see seem to be the good section really as such it's a section that generally does a few weights um the dominant pegs um on the lake really is five and nine generally and they're in the section so normally to win this section you'd really have to win the match um i've drawn peg four unfortunately on five i've got one the one only dead ship so that's handy isn't it Got about the best angler in the southwest, possibly the country on commercials, and he's drawn the best peg as well. So, but um, so we've got blinkers up to the left. Um, so five is on me left there, where the lake sort of splits off. Um, and to me right, uh, peg three isn't in, but peg two is, and that's in me section. And he's the same as me, he's got the wind right to left. Um, there are the two pegs I didn't really want in the section, if I'm honest, because. The rest of the section sort of is on the you can sort of just about see the bank on my left sort of runs up past des um it's a funny i wish i'd sort of show you a picture really but it's quite a funny shaped lake for those of you who don't know it and peg five is to me left but then peg six is away and around the corner and on opposite bank sort of facing back up towards us um as is nine ten and then 12 is on the corner so they've all sort of got the wind blowing into their bank and um, I think they might be hard to keep up with today we'll have to see so we caught a nice one across straight away um, got a mug one if you like we were ready to go as soon as the whistle went like we always are on these snake legs a snake legs straight across and we caught one we went back over afterwards and unfortunately we couldn't really find any more we did foul hook one um and that was about it so i'm figuring it's going to fight hard so i'm sort of preparing myself to fish maggots now in a couple of spots in the deep water so um i've got a line out in front of me and i've got a line to me left and me right sort of on the second shelf in about three foot of water as well The wind is, um, it blows one minute and the next it's sort of a little bit calmer. As you can see now, it's just dropped that little bit, but it doesn't last for long. Actually, got two lines across, it's not one sort of. Um, up next to the boards to be right up next to the boards i need to put my dolly butt on but this wind's sort of a few inches away and then off to me right slightly i'm sort of a meter off just at the top of the shelf um for any fish that are sort of backed out for a little bit of micro and that is blown around over there this one's unfortunately foul hooked Already it looks to be one of those days where they're going to be very hard to tempt. I've not been down um, Acorn Over for quite a while, so I'm probably a little bit out of tune, but um, I used to know it well. Uh, things don't really change that much. Generally, I try and fish sort of um, soft pellets, expanders and such over micros across to start with, because it's always a sort of banker, you can catch something on that. And you can soon tell if it's a hard pellet day, and I can quickly, quickly like swap a hook length and just start putting a few hard four mils. I put a few hard four mils in with the micros as well anyway, because I don't want them to get preoccupied um, just uh, uh, sucking up those micros, otherwise the bite, bites can tend to be get, get very um, small sort of very quick little dinks and things so i always think you're better off putting a few fours in there make them suck a little bit harder they don't tend to differentiate between baits that way um, so you can fish a soft pellet and you get a bit more of a positive bite but it's undergone quite a few changes it certainly looks very different all the boards are across now um, up next to the island and the pallets we used to sit on eight and the water have disappeared just now sort of as you can see i'm sat on a concrete staging 
um, and the boards and across. So I think I'm right in saying that it, uh, it's a little bit wider now than it used to be. Um, it looks lovely though, and it, I imagine it, it makes it um, very similar for everybody. Pretty much the same a lot of the pegs now with defined shelves and such. I have to admit, I quite enjoyed the sort of tuffets across and finding a little ledge and things like that. I always thought that was half the battle, but um, this has certainly made it a lot, a lot easier. Instant win. Instant win. Well, it's the same old, same old as most matches. Just a um, uh, nice, steady start. Just fish across. Keep your eye at what everybody else is doing. I haven't really overcommitted to anything on my shorter lines yet. I've fed a few maggots, as you've seen, but there's plenty of silvers in here to mop them up as well. So um, just just fed those just in case. And plus, if the wind gets up any more, you're not going to be able to hold it across there. It doesn't look that bad on, on the water, but believe me, it's sort of coming up over the banks. So what you're seeing on the water is probably three times stronger than that, hitting the pole a little bit higher off the water. Even superstars like Des have me left is struggling with the wind. He has one or two things to say about it, actually. <laughs> rig um, I'm thinking already about making it a heavier rig so I do like a little light strung out rig here um, so I'm sticking with it for now could be worse though could be raining it was raining when we were setting up but it does seem we eased off so that's always good Look on down the um, second ledge. And nothing happening down there at all, to be honest. I've seen others are catching down on their second edge, but um, and nothing on mine. So it's back across. Never a good sign. Started hooking the old skimmer across there now. Um, yeah, not ideal. No, Gone to a heavier rig now. Um, I was fishing like a point point one and uh, very light light strung out rig, but I just can't do anything with that now. So we've gone up to a point four um, with the bulk down down a three inch up length and we've gone to maggot and we're popping in a little bit of little bit of micro, little bit of ground bait. And it hasn't seemed to made any odds with um, catching skimmers and crassio, whether it's uh, an expander over micros or whether it's a maggot over ground bait to be honest. Crassy is you know, nice little weight builders. You really want carp though in this section, but they are nice weight builders. And saying now the wind's dropped, you, you can at least see the bites. It's just not ideal catching crassies and skimmers when I'm looking around and, um, and people are catching just odd uh, proper carp. No one's running away with it yet, although Des has, um, he has seen us 
finally found some fish. I felt we were sort of neck and neck the first couple of hours, um, just both sort of scratching. But um, he, he's gone down to his left now. I'd say he's probably on the second shelf. He's not right inside anyway. And um, yeah, he's bagging now. He's getting, he's getting the carp every put in. I think there was only ever one winner with him on that peg anyway. Class act, or class peg. Finally we find a fish on the second shelf but off to our right. Actually cut quite a bit of film so we're probably four hours in now because I did nothing really. I'd sort of I reckon I had 30 pounds in the first three hours of just all sorts of cross, um, which was slow. Um, and but I couldn't catch anything close. Uh, but there's my first fish close now on that second shelf off to me right, 2 plus 2 on an expander throwing a few expanders just off the keep nets there on my top kit as well I've kept trying that left hand side at, at, at 3 foot of water on that second shelf but I can't, can't get a touch on that left hand side only the right hand side has yielded anything um, which is a shame because I don't think it will last with me just, just sitting on it all the time So I'm just toying with that, that right hand edge, taking a couple off of that and then I'm going back across but we're not catching any carp across, we're just catching an odd skimmer, an odd carassio, but at least there's somewhere to go to give that right edge a, a, a rest. Back across, as I say, just for that odd carassio, but at least as it keeps us ticking over, I just, I'm just really struggling to find fish anywhere close. Apart from that second shelf to me right, two plus two, I actually went two plus three, thinking it was a bit longer with the, with the sort of empty peg between me and peg two. Um, might be better, and it, and it wasn't. Um, it was worse, if anything, really strange. So yeah, it came back uh, two plus two, and, um, and then just got that odd big fat, nice little carassio across. Or at least that last one was a nice fat one. I put the dolly butt on as well now, we're having to push it right in tight now, but the wind has at least dropped.
just seem more willing to eat that expander today than, than they are those hard pellets, which is quite strange. We had a lot of rain, mind. It's quite a funny colour as well. Um, yeah, it is. It's quite a, a muddy looking colour, and it's only when the fish really break the surface you, you can see them and know where they are. It's been a, been a nightmare to try and sort of scoop any uh, uh, foul hook. Was about two foul hook to have landed, but um, yeah, they've they've had to break the surface to be able to scoop them out. You can't see them underneath at all. We're actually right down our edge now properly. Um, got about 20 inches of water now um, down to the right edge. Again, two plus two, so we've come up the shelf right on top of it now, right in next to the boards because it's boards down the inside, same as you can see across there. So, which is lovely now down the inside. So I think in the summer this is going to be absolutely amazing down the edge. It'll be some colossal weights to be honest. Yeah, I can see some 300 pounds being caught. Sure. I'm just fishing it with maggots over micros. Grain bait might have been better, but I haven't got time to experiment now. Um, there's like oh, barely anything in the match left, and I just want to catch everything I can now to try and get Gareth some points. I know we're not anywhere near winning the section. Des is absolutely wrong with the match, I think. He hasn't stopped catching since he found those fish on that second shelf to his left. And um, peg six, peg nine, peg ten, peg twelve have all got that wind. Twelve's down on the corner. Um, six, nine and ten have all got that wind blowing into their banks. So I think they've been catching down the edges. The chap on my right is struggling, sort of same as me. Two and The peg's two and four. Just got that wind right to left, but... So we're catching a few now, so it's just about trying to get everything we can out for Gareth. Feels a bit different. This one's a bit more ploddy. It's got a bit of weight to it. This one, we've got a proper one at last. Only six or seven minutes ago, so he couldn't have come at a better time, really. the time I really wanted to get this fish in fast and get in and get another one but I don't want to risk losing it at the same time if I lose it now and tank will be rigged that'll just be a nightmare um, I feel like we might have got an extra point for Gareth now just with this last fish or so so I really want to make sure of it This lovely looking fish is um, just like a sort of half ghost, half mirror.
Range ten pound. So we've ended up um, fourth in the section. Um, you'll see a cat shot apart. I'll be catching a minute. I've caught ninety nine pounds. Um, chap on my right had a lot less, probably half of that. I think he had around fifty pound actually. But I've, I've had ninety nine pound. Um, I beat peg twelve. He's had a lower ninety. And I've beat peg 10 as well, which surprised me. Um, I think he had around £80. But peg 9 had £120. Des has had £200 and absolutely robbed the match. No surprise there. And peg 6, Paul's had £107. So possibly could have had that. Um, yeah, might have left a point in the peg there. Second. Um, pretty normal, really. It's a nice day, lovely day, and I'm back down here again next week. So we'll see if we're um, if we're able to improve at all. See what we've learnt. So catch us again then. Cheers, everybody.